Hello everyone! In this video, we will be talking about the CMMT-AS and CMMT-ST, which are part of the CMMT Drives series at Festo. We're going to be using a library on the Rockwell PLC Logix platform to execute point-to-point -point movement for these drives. This is our layout. I chose to connect to port X18 for drive parameterization and to the top port for real-time field bus control, which is port X19 for the CMMT-AS and port XF1 on the CMMT-ST drive. In this case, we'll be using version 36 of Compact Logics PLC, Ethernet IP is the communication preference, and the control method is Profidrive over Ethernet IP. Now let's go to the website, typing in www.festo.com. Then we simply go to the country and pick where you are. In the search area, type in CMMT-AS, and then we scroll until we find the servo drive that we're looking for. We click on the one we want to select, and immediately we are presented with the drive and the downloads area. Once we get to the downloads and the software section, we're going to download, first of all, the library for Rockwell. We're going to scroll until we find function blocks for Rockwell. Then we expand this by clicking the down arrow, and the latest function block is version 2.8, and I'm going to click on Download. Additionally, we are going to need some Festo software, which is going to be the Festo Automation Suite. The latest is 2.9. We start the download, then we install the Festo Automation Suite first. After the installation is complete, then we launch the Festo Automation Suite, followed by the plugin for the drive installation next. And here is the installation complete. After we've installed the plugin for the CMMTAS, we're going back to the first page and select New Project. If you have the devices connected online, you can scan for the devices. I'm turning the devices off right now so it doesn't scan when you first select this field with this tab, and then if you want a successive scan, you do a refresh. This drive here is the device that I'm using, and when we take a closer look at this device on the right-hand side, we see the device details. In this case, I have an older version firmware, and it's important to always go to the web and download the latest firmware. In this case, I'm going to do a firmware update, because this is what I recommend for any new commissioning startup. The controller now is cycling power. Then we go and click on Device Details, and now we can see that we have the new firmware 35.9 instead of 34. Let's go back and click on Actions, and we go to Network Settings. Here, that we can modify the IP address. Automation Suite is able to find the device through DHCP on first startup, so you would turn off the DHCP enable, and you would assign an IP address to the device along with the gateway. And what this does is, it sets the front X18 port IP address, not the top port. The top port is going to be set inside of the project. At this point, the controller is ready for a program. First, I'm plugging in the Ethernet cable into the top port for the PLC control. Next, I click Refresh to rescan the device. This discovers the second port on the drive. And then I'm going to click on Add to Project. Now, let's go back to the home page. The controller also has a web page. We open the web page. From here, we can also do a download firmware package. We can also set up the network settings on the web server. And we have a diagnosis area. Let's go back to the home page. Now that we have this, we can rename the device. We can call it whatever we like. Then we double click on the device to open up the first time commissioning. Here you can start our first setup. We select the drive and we start to add the devices from our project building material. In my case, I'll add my motor. I have an EMMTSA motor. I enter here the part number found here on the devices, 5242197, and then click Apply. Next, I'm going to add an axis, so I'm going to choose this part number, 8192344. I click Apply. Then we're going to add a mounting kit between the axis and the motor. That part number is 8197468. Click Apply, and thus we've got the hardware selection complete. Now, 
Let's work on the device settings. In my case, I'm only using 120 volts, so I'm going to modify this. For intermediate circuit voltage, I select 99 volts. I'm not using any external brake resistor, and I'm going to keep I.O. and field bus for the activation of the enable signal. Next comes the application data entry. I don't expect to have a load or anything connected to my actuator. Here you enter the weight of the load you're moving with the linear actuator. In my case, since I have no load, I leave the field at the default value of zero. I'm going to keep the axis horizontal, but if I wanted to, I could flip it vertical. You could change the rotation polarity by clicking here or here. The next entry we need to change is very important. It is the field bus configuration. The available protocols are Profinet and EtherCAT, but in this case we're using Ethernet IP. We click on Ethernet IP, and here we can go and change the IP address of the Ethernet control port on the top of the drive, X19 for CMMT AS drives, or XF1 for the CMMT ST drives. Next, we move on and configure the profiles, and we start with the factor group. In the factor group, we have two parameters that we need to configure the position and velocity resolutions. We have six decimal places for position and three for velocity. We leave the defaults unchanged. And then we have the telegram selection. For point to point positioning library, we use the telegram 1 to 11. Then we move on to the axis configuration under the axis 1 section. Here we can see, based on the part number, we're using the actual working stroke of the linear actuator. We begin with homing. For the homing method, I'm going to go to the drop down menu and scroll through the abundant referencing methods, and I select this one. At this point, we're done configuring the axis but we still see some orange squares that represent parameters that have wrong values, and we need to correct them. Most errors are corrected by clicking this button, but some have to be adjusted manually. If we click on the small orange square next to the parameter value, we see the recommended values that we need to enter to correct the error. So let's correct these values by starting with correct all parameters, and then we correct each one individually. For the homing, I selected the homing to a switch, but since I chose no switches, then I need either to add a homing switch or change the homing method. I choose a different homing method instead. Then we move on and correct the other remaining errors. At this point, we want to commission the controller by itself. Just using the Festo Automation Suite software, I'm going to write to the device because I don't want anything that's in the device to be left. And now we're online and want to store the project on the device and reinitialize the device because this is a newly downloaded project. You might have a few errors. I'm going to accept all so that we have a green LED on the FAS project in order for any movement to happen by the Automation Suite. Next step is to take control using the plugin. This is taking the control sovereignty away from anything outside this FAS software. Then I want to enable the power stage, after which we go to the diagnosis to check for any errors, and then we go to I.O. state. I have wired the STO A and B so that there's no e-stop. Control-enabled hardware signal is on. Otherwise, I would not be able to enable this drive. Let's start with a homing sequence. Now let's run a jog sequence. Let's run an incremental move sequence next. And finally, an absolute move sequence. Now let's go to the software application portion. Let's start Rockwell Studio 5000 and start a new project using the processor 11769L36ERM part number. But in your case, it can be any Logix processor. I'm using software version 36. Next, I'm importing the AOI for the CMMT drive 
from the folders I have previously downloaded from the Festo website. Next, I'm going to register the EDS file for the CMMT. After the import, I'm adding the CMMT drive to the I.O. tree. Configure the correct IP address. I'm changing the format from SINT to INT and then download the program to the PLC to test the I.O. communications. Here we can see the I.O. OK light solid green, which means the communications are working properly. Now, let's begin adding the code to our project. We begin by adding the AOI instruction. Next, we configure the AOI function block. We create a control tag first. Then we map the input and output control tags. And lastly, we add the connection status tag. At this point, we are ready to download the program and test the function block. As you can see now, the program is up and running, and we can deduct that by looking at the values in the function block that currently are being updated. In our function block, the modpause tag is very important, so I added the tag description to the rung comment as a visual aid to help us test this AOI. The description I used here was copied from one of the code examples that was downloaded with the entire folder from the Festo website. Now let's test the function block. First, we need to enable the axis. We type a value of 1 in this entry field. We can see here the axis enable status being updated. Next, we need to reference the axis. This executes the referencing function programmed in the FAS. We enter a value of 4 into the mode pause field, then we enter a value of 1 into the execute mode field, and we can see in the image below the axis executing the homing routine, and it ends by turning on the axis referenced flag. Now let's run some incremental moves. We begin by changing the mode pause value to 1, then position value to 100,000 which equals to 100 millimeters, a velocity value of 80, which equals to 0 0.08 meters per second. And then we set the execute mode value to 1 to begin the move. We always toggle the execute mode after each move. Now let's run some absolute moves. We begin by changing the mode pause value to 2, then position value to 150,000, which equals to 150 millimeters, a velocity value of 100, which equals to 0.1 meters per second. And then we set the execute mode value to 1 to begin the move. At the end of the move, we change the position to 0. And then we set the execute mode value to 1. To begin the move, we always toggle the execute mode after each move. Now, let's run some velocity moves. We begin by changing the mode pause value to 3 then position value to zero, which means that we are not sending the actuator to a physical location, a velocity value of 10, which equals a tenth of a meters per second. The rotation can be selected as positive or negative rotation, 
by changing the value from 0 to 1 in the positive or negative AOI data input fields, and then we set the execute mode value to 1 to begin the move. If we change the intermediate stop value in the AOI from 1 to 0, the motion would pause, and if we change it back to 1, the motion would resume, and if we change the value of cancel traversing from 1 to 0, it would cancel the velocity move. Mode pause 4, we have already demonstrated at the very beginning of the application programming, but we also have mode pause 5. Using this mode, the AOI sets the current actual servo position to 0 when we set the execute mode value to 1. Now let's run some traversing block moves, also known as record selection moves. First, we create the record table inside the FAS. Here I created two moves with positions and velocities already set. Next, we begin by changing the mode pause value to 6, then position value to 1, which means that we are executing the move 1 of the record table. And then we set the execute mode value to 1 to begin the move. When the move is done, we change the position value to 2, which means that the second move of the record table will be executed. And then we set the execute mode value to 1 to begin the move again. To initiate a jog move, the velocity and the position field values don't matter. The jog speeds are set inside the FAS software. Let's begin by changing the mode pause value to 7. And to begin a jog move, we have to set to 1 the jog 1 value for positive motion. And also set to 1 the jog 2 for negative motion. The last mode is the incremental jogging. It works the same way as mode 7, which is typical jogging. But in incremental jogging mode 8, the jog is a predefined incremental move that is also set inside the FAS software. For positive jog 1, we use the relative position jog 1 parameter. And for negative jog 2, we use the relative position jog 2 parameter. In our case, the value is set to 30 millimeters per jog action. Now let's demonstrate the incremental jogging by setting the jog 1 to a value of 1, to inch forward every time we set it to 1. And then to jog in the opposite direction, we set the jog 2 to a value of 1, to jog in reverse direction. This concludes our video presentation of the CMMTAS, Rockwell AOI operation. We hope you've found this video useful. For additional technical documentation and instructions, please check out the video description below.